Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Arch with Imran. I'm Imran. I hope you guys are having a great day. Today, we're going to be revisiting one of my recent axonometric site analysis. And due to popular demand, I'm going to be doing a voiceover and walkthrough of how I achieve each step. So, let's get into it. So starting off, here we get all my files from Digimaps, these are all my different styles and different layouts and they all match up perfectly and they're the same scale. Now if you guys want to see how I downloaded these, I'll leave the tutorial in the card. I've also gone onto Google Maps and taken a screenshot of the same area and again you can see that in my satellite tutorial. Now here I am just lining them all up so they stack evenly on top of each other and then I can crop the image so that, so that it shows the area I want. Okay, so here you can see I initially tried using the magic wand tool to select the building, but it didn't really look very good. So I'm going around with the lasso tool and hand drawing each building. Now, beforehand, I planned out which colors I want each building to be and how I'm gonna group them. So, as you'll see in this design, I group things like schools, army buildings, sports facilities, and university buildings. This project is an ecology centre, and I really wanted to highlight the different types of buildings in the area and why it's such a good location, as it's got a great sense of community. Again, I'm just using the lasso tool. I then make it a selection, and then I do Alt-Delete to fill it. Remember, all of these are on different layers and it's important to keep the layers clean as you do this because you don't want to get confused. Now guys, quick, quick reminder, please go check out the Discord and Instagram in our description. If you guys follow this tutorial, please let me know and tag me in Instagram and I'd love to share it. Now, keep in mind, before doing the site analysis, I planned out exactly how I wanted it to look. I knew I wanted to have multiple layers and I wanted them all to show different contents. So here, I now take my satellite and I make it black and white, and I'm also highlighting the area that I've chosen as my site. Now again, like I said earlier, make sure you keep all your layers clean. Here, I'm start grouping them into each layer and I'm color coordinating. Next, I take the, a sun path off the internet for this area and I just do a circle and cut out the area where the sun isn't. Then I turn the opacity down so you can see through it slightly. So the next layer is accessibility. Now again, this site's got great accessibility on foot, by taxi and by bus. So I wanted to use this layer to make this really clear. This area's got a number of bus routes intersecting it and therefore I've coloured them and made them visible. The way I've done this is I've used the pen tool and then I've gone right click stroke path and I've chosen the brush and I've stroked it with the right colour and the right size brush. I then make sure they're the correct colours to fit the actual bus timetable. I then wanted arrows to show the direction, so what I did was I simply used the rulers I'd already made for my grid, and I just did a, a V-shape. Then I shrink these down and put them on the bus route so you can see the direction they're going in. Now I didn't want to do too many arrows so I just did roughly two on each. So now you can see all my layers are done and they're stacked up. Now this bit looks confusing but again we're just using the same technique we use in my highlight and shadows tutorial. Fortunately a bit of the footage went missing. But all I did was I used Command T to go into free transform and I held the control or command key to free transform the corners. Again, I'll leave this 
Shadows tutorial and you can see me do this in more detail. I add a stroke to each layer and I use the line tool with the dash line to make sure they all line up. Next, I just use an arrow brush to show the wind. And again, I use the control and free transform so I can change the shape. Next, I add strokes to all the bus routes just so they stand out better. And also to the taxi rank. Now again, a number of these techniques are shown in my other videos, so go check them out. Now here I am using the map just to double check all my data is correct, and then I start my key. Again, as you can see, rulers are absolutely crucial in my work. To, make, to get a ruler, you want to hit Ctrl R so you get these rulers appear at the top and side. And then if you just click it, you should be able to drag the blue ruler out to anywhere on your page. Now I've got the main data done, I focus on the aesthetics. So here I'm choosing all the colors I want, and these colors I've taken for Adobe Color, and I've saved them to my online library. I can then access these in Photoshop and just go right click, choose color overlay. The reason I like this axonometric site analysis is because you can get a load of data shown in one diagram. And then I plan to do another diagram that's more zoomed in that I can do more details on. Now, finally, I do the key for my sun path and prevailing winds. And then I'll drag the site to the satellite. And with that, the site analysis is done. Remember guys, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll be, do my best to answer them. Okay guys, that's all we have time for. Hopefully you found it helpful. As always, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell. And if you guys want to request any more video ideas, please put them in the comments and I'll make sure to check them out. See you guys in another video.